What good is an antiderivative? Let's look at an example where the derivative has a concrete meaning. We've looked at this example before. The derivative of a position function is the velocity. The derivative of the velocity function is the acceleration. Now, suppose you would know acceleration. For example, if an object is falling to the surface of the Earth, its acceleration is either negative 9.8 meters per second squared or negative 32 feet per second squared, depending on your unit. And you want information about the velocity, or maybe you want information about the position. So you want to take information about this derivative and use it to get information about this antiderivative. Or you could now, if once you found the velocity function, get information about this antiderivative. Let's go from the general to the concrete by looking at an example. Hot air balloons show up significantly more in calculus exercises than they probably do in most of our day-to-day -day lives. Let's say a hot air balloon is ascending at a rate of 12 feet per second. And when it's 80 feet above the ground, a package is dropped from it. Given that gravitational acceleration is negative 32 feet per second squared and neglecting air resistance, when will the object hit the ground? So here's that question reframed in terms of these functions. Given this acceleration function, when is S of t the height equal to zero? So you see we're trying to take information about the acceleration and go up this chart to the position. And we'll do that via antiderivatives. So let's start. We know that the acceleration function is the derivative of the velocity function, reframing that. V of t is an antiderivative of A of t. So an antiderivative of negative 32. Well, you really just need to do homework and get experience with these things. Um, but if you give it some thought, you'll hopefully agree that negative 32t 
yeah, is an antiderivative. However, it's not the only antiderivative, and it's not necessarily the antiderivative that we want. Fortunately, we know that any other antiderivative looks like this. Any other antiderivative is just this antiderivative plus a constant. But what could this constant be? Let's go back to this question. What information haven't we used yet? Well, we haven't used this 80 feet, but probably more to the point, 12 feet per second is a velocity. We're trying to get information about a velocity. The velocity is constant. It's always 12. Or sorry, I misspoke. Well, no, let's go back. The velocity of the object changes. The object falls, it accelerates. The velocity of the balloon is a constant 12 feet per second. So you're in the balloon, you've got this object, you're holding it out, you're about to drop it. This object is also going up at 12 feet per second. So at the moment that you release the object, its velocity is 12. In other words, or other symbols, at the moment of release, the velocity is 12. And V of zero equals a C. So we solve and we find the velocity function. Now, why did we find the velocity function? Well, because we're ultimately looking for information about the position. And the position is the antiderivative of the velocity. So we did this as an intermediate step. We found the velocity. The velocity is the derivative of the position. So the position is an anti derivative of the velocity. How could you get t by taking a derivative? Well, t squared would give you t if you took its derivative. It would give you 2t, though, not negative 32t. Negative 16t squared will give you negative 32t when you differentiate. Antiderivative of 12 is 12t. Any, this is n antiderivative. Again, not necessarily the one we're looking for, but the antiderivative we're looking for has to be this plus a constant.
the time has come to use this 80 at t equals zero at the moment of release, the height is 80. S of zero equals 80. And if you plug zero into this, you get zero, zero, C. So 80 equals C. And when does the object hit the ground? Well, it hits the ground when the height is zero. And since this is a calculus class and also because I am running out of space, we'll assume that you can set a quadratic equal to zero. This doesn't factor or do anything fancy like that. You just have to use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula gives you two answers, but time has to be a positive. So the package hits the ground in 2.64 seconds.